Hi everyone, it's me, Krillius, Team Racing Productions co-host and moderator. And I'm Erin Palmer, Team Racing Productions co-host and moderator. Joining us is John from Washington Area Lawyers for the Arts. Hey, John. Hi. John, before we get started talking about your organization, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Well, sure. Uh, first off, we're delighted to be here today. Thank you so much for having us on the show. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to address your constituents. So me, um, I grew up here in Alexandria, Virginia, so I'm a, I'm a townie, I'm a homeboy. Um, grew and uh, started my career uh, as a musician, as you might be able to tell from my background, and I still am a performing artist. Uh, and uh, spent the first 30 years or so of my career doing arts management. I was with the Washington Performing Arts Society. I was with the Kennedy Center. I was with Washington Ballet. I was with all the major arts institutions in town. Then sort of um, went over to the dark side for a while, got out of the arts uh, altogether and went into law and worked for a number of uh, law associations. Uh, you know, we have a lot of associations in this area. <laughs> There's a lot of opportunities. So I was, uh, uh, I like to make the joke that uh, I went from being a musician to being a bankruptcy person, which is a natural segue, but um chick. Uh, but uh, did that for about 16 years. And then this position uh, with the Washington Area Lawyers for the Arts opened up. And it seemed like the perfect synergy to sort of meld my arts background with my legal background and sort of uh, move forward and see what kind of services we can provide to artists in DC community. Wow, wow, thank you so much for that. Now, um, John, please tell us about the Washington Area Lawyers for the Arts, how we got started and all of that, so. Very yes. good, the whole, the whole dog and pony show, as we say. So, what I'd like to do is kind of walk you through what we do. So Washington Area Lawyers for the Arts. Actually, you know, let's just start with a video, shall we? I'll just do that. Here we go. I'll let somebody else talk for a while. I know of no other organization that provides the expert legal advice to artists who really need legal advice. We not only serve artists, but also arts organizations, entrepreneurs, anyone who's involved in the creative process. There's times when you don't have the funds and you do feel like the legal system is beyond your reach. We have a series of workshops and seminars where we can educate the artists on any specific area of law. There's practically one a week on a wide variety of topics. I took at least three or four workshops that they had. It helped me decide what was the best entity for our company. We also have a number of legal clinics. We have free clinics. We offer them throughout the year. We offer them at most of the major law schools in the area. How do I create a waiver? How do I create an agreement? How do I create a contract? These questions are things that hold creatives up. We can push projects over the finish line and make things happen that otherwise would just get bogged down. We generally handle about 110 litigation suits during the course of the year. Some of them are settled out of court, some of them in court. We've actually had cases that have gone three years and that wall attorney was right there beside that artist the entire time. To have that seed planted that there was a lawyer organization for the arts was unbelievable. It was like a, a ray of hope. Volunteers are the heart and soul of Walla. They're our greatest asset. If you have to look at the exponential growth, an investment in Walla is an investment in our community, in our creativity, in our culture. It's like if you nurture the artist, you'll get good art. The good art will then nurture humanity. So that's kind of an overview of what we're all about. Um, let me just kind of give you the background historically. So we're actually celebrating our 40th anniversary this year. We were founded in 1983. And it's important to point out here that we were founded by an equal number of artists and attorneys. And it's always remained that way with Walla. We, our board of directors is a 50-50 split of creatives and legal people. And we want to keep it that way because we feel that it's a, it's a synergy in the community that we want to keep going. I had an interview recently with one of the founders of the organization, and she told me that their concept, when they actually drew up the articles of incorporation and everything, was that 
New York was seeming like the big art hub at the time back in the 80s and DC sort of seemed like a second city and they wanted to make sure that artists stayed in the District of Columbia and that they had the support that they needed to monetize their art and to continue doing what they needed to do rather than running away to another market where they could get other support. So our mission is um, to provide access to education, advocacy and legal services through workshops, legal clinics, and pro bono referral services. So you heard me say that in the, in the video earlier, but it's important because those are sort of the, the pillars of Walla, if you will. So the first pillar is education, right? And we, we, we have a series of workshops that we offer. And those workshops are basically, and these are sort of keywords to remember, they're to educate artists in order to empower them to continue to create their craft, right? So what we do is we have a workshop where someone can come in, we have a wide variety of topics, we do almost 50 a year, so there's practically one a week. And it's on a wide variety of topics wherever art and law sort of intersect, right? There is no art and law per se, but there's an awful lot of places where the two run into one another or cross one another, and that creatives need to be well aware of the situation there. So you might find a workshop on copyright law or trademark or patent law right? How to protect your work. You might find one, find one on how to negotiate contracts, something everyone does every day, multiple times a day. So negotiating strategies are very important. We might find one on licensing your products, how, you know, how to monetize your product beyond the actual performance or creation. We talk about all kinds of things, a myriad of contract provisions that you're going to run into. We talk about visa licensing to get, you know, creatives into the country to perform or to perform overseas elsewhere, a wide variety of topics. And then there's a wide variety of areas that we speak about as well. So it's not just music and dance and theater, but we also consider fashion law. We consider the culinary arts. So there's an awful lot of creative uh, content that we can cover during the course of the year in these workshops. The next pillar that we talk about is legal services. And there's two sort of streams of legal services that we offer. One is the legal clinics you may have heard me mention in the video before. And the idea there is we want to explore and understand certain topics a little bit deeper, right? So think of it this way. It's like speed dating an attorney. What we do is we fill a room with attorneys. You come in, you sit down at a table with a guy, you ask a question of law, like, what does this contract provision mean? I think somebody swiped my art online, you know, what do I do? And you get a quick answer, like a 10, 15 minute answer that should then allow you to move on to the next step, right? And that next step, if we discover that it is an actionable thing, that actually you, your rights have been violated, then we go to the next step, which is uh, legal services, right? So the bread and butter of what we do is uh, provide uh, referrals for legal services to the DC legal community. Now I want to tell you that all these attorneys who volunteer with us, and we have probably about 1500 attorneys on the roster, about 450 of them are active all the time on our, on our legal pro bono listserv. They donate their time, right? It is free pro bono to creatives in order to get the services that they need. And I, and I always say they, they want to tell you they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. But in fact, they have to do a certain number of hours every year to keep their license in the District of Columbia. So we are actually channeling that energy to something that's way more interesting than contract negotiation or writing up a brief or, I mean, some of these guys that we work with, they're like, please, please give me something interesting to work with. Well, we have the most interesting community uh, in the District of Columbia. So yes, a lot of artists come to us and, and we pass those referrals. So the way it works with referrals is someone will go to our website and I'll give you the website in, in a bit. They submit a form there that says, I think I have an issue. It goes to our legal services director, Maggie Gladson, and Maggie will take a look at it and go, yes, I think this is something we need to talk about. She'll give you a call back and she'll ask, she'll play 20 questions. She'll take in all the information on the case and then she'll translate it from art speak to legalese, if you will, and then send it out to our cadre of, uh, of volunteers. They then look at these cases that come up and they go, oh, pfft. I could do that over breakfast. You know, I, I'll be happy to help that artist out. And then what we do is we match the artist up with the attorney. They interview them, decide who they feel most comfortable working with, and then they work in lockstep with that attorney to the fruition of the case. And it could be something easy. You know, it could be just drafting a letter saying, hey, this is cease and desist. Stop swiping my stuff. Take it off of your website. It could be that easy. Or it could get into, you know, nastiness. And nobody likes going to court. Uh, but it could get uh, more involved. But the point is you'll have representation throughout the process with one of our volunteers. Okay, so that third pillar 
is advocacy, advocacy and research, right? So we got a lot of big brains at our organization and uh, a lot of good thinkers. So we put them to task uh, on a myriad of different things that we deal with. Uh, we do a series of white papers on the economic impact of the arts in the District of Columbia. We did one recently on incubators and how they affect the micro uh, economics of a neighborhood, you know, of the incubators getting together and, and what that brings to a community. Um, we do a lot of that. I find myself sitting in Richmond and sitting in Annapolis and sitting in the halls of the Wilson Building quite a lot, uh, talking to legislators about uh, why the arts are important, how they benefit the economy, how they benefit our culture and our community. Uh, so we do a lot of that type of stuff as well. And that's mostly us just going out and championing, championing the arts. You know, I mean, that's somebody's got to speak up for people. And if you wear a suit and you have a tie and people think you're an attorney, sometimes they actually listen to you. OK, so. We're a member organization. You don't have to be a member to receive services from us, but I think that'd be great if we can keep the lights on and continue offering these services. So we offer services to artists. There are a number of benefits from that. One, you get access to the pro bono legal referrals that we talked about. You get free admission to all of our basics classes. So we have a series of classes that we offer once a month that is on the basics that everybody should know about. How to license your work, how to protect your work, you know, what, do you, what contract provisions do you need? That type of thing. You have priority notification about upcoming education workshops. You get on our mailing list, that's easy. But you also get invitations to arts and cultural activities around the, around the district. And I should point out at this point that we are Washington area lawyers for the arts. We actually serve not just the District of Columbia, but also the Commonwealth of Virginia and the state of Maryland as well. We find ourselves, it's a very large geographic footprint, if you will. But uh, there, we do have sister organizations up in Baltimore and we've sort of divvied up the state there. They sort of do the northern neck and out on the panhandle and we kind of handle everything around the District of Columbia. Virginia does not have an organization right now. They're looking to rebuild one, but we, I find myself in Cape Charles, in Richmond, you know, all over the state uh, assisting artists down there as well. So we have a very large reach. Um, if you are an arts organization, if you are a nonprofit arts organization, we have a membership for that as well. And the membership extends to your board of directors and your staff. So if you become an, at an organizational level, you're pretty much getting carte blanche blanket coverage. But we also have another arts organization called a partner organization, where if you are a membership organization yourself, let's say an art gallery, and you have 70 artists under your banner, you can come in as a partner organization and then get a discount for each one of those members as well. It's a nice benefit for your organization to offer to your members as part of that organizational membership. We also have an attorney membership uh, for any of you attorneys out there who are listening, you want to get involved. Attorney membership gets you obviously access to the pro bono listserv so you can pick up some casework. It gets you assistance in reporting your pro bono hours back to your firms and to your bar. You get a number of speaking opportunities. Like I say, we do 50 workshops and we have experts on each one of those workshops. If you, know, if you want to come and talk to our folks, we'd love to have you on as a speaker. You get a number of networking opportunities. We do a series of networking events during the course of the year where we kind of get the arts community with the legal community together and have a couple of uh, tasty beverages and uh, talk about things. That's always a good time. Uh, you get free admission to all the Walla programs and invitation to those cultural things that we talked about before. And for law firms, we offer that on a mass scale. If you want to cover the entire IP division of your uh, firm, we can offer that as well. Okay. So I'm going to show you another video. This is sort of a, a testimonial from uh, uh, artist Craig Kraft. I don't know if you know him. He's got a studio over in Anacostia. Nice guy. Got a beautiful studio. And he's going to talk about a case that uh, we handled with him just recently, just kind of give you a feel for what it's all about. I've never seen someone so invested in what they do other than artists. They are so passionate about their work that you just become passionate about it with them, regardless of what it is that they make. The Washington Area Lawyers for the Arts is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving the artistic expression of creatives within the Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia communities, serving the legal needs of the creative community. I knew, I guess, I wanted to be a lawyer because I would be able to defend people who were in situations where they really couldn't defend themselves. My name is Craig Kraft. I am a sculptor. More specifically, I am a light artist.
I had a project that I wanted to do at the Ground Zero Blues Club in Clarksdale, Mississippi. The walls were completely graffitied. I had a friend who was a professional photographer, and we took photographs of that club. My plan was to put an added mark of light to the image. After making about six or eight of these pieces, this photographer decided these were actually her artworks because she had helped take the photographs. I knew I needed some help with this, some legal help. As soon as I got involved, and this is something that happens time and time again, is I'm able to really equalize the, the playing field. And it's really great, and artists feel empowered. Once I made the phone call and heard Aaron's voice, and his, his generosity came through. It wasn't just a copyright registration, but it was something that dealt with a very specific legal issue. She was claiming I had stolen these photographs from her, which was totally untrue. And we had to go to court eventually. We won, and she had to retract the statements that she'd been making. Aaron was instrumental in getting all that done because his was really the legal basis for our arguments in court. You can have the best case, and I have had wonderful cases through Walla, but yet you still feel crummy in litigation. Nobody likes it. And artists want to focus on their art. There's times when you do feel like the legal system is beyond your reach. To have that seed planted that there was a, a, a lawyer organization for the arts was unbelievable. It was like a ray of hope. So there you go. Uh, actually, I should tell you, Aaron Arce Stark, the attorney that you heard in that uh, in that uh, video, uh, very shortly after we shot this, had twins. We haven't seen him picking up a lot of cases lately. I think he's had his hands full. But <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of what we're all about. Uh, what's up on the screen right now is uh, is our contact information. If you want to follow us on social media, if you want to come to our website and take a look, you can find out all of our news, resources, and events and everything that's kind of going on. You can see the entire calendar of events for all of our workshops coming up. And again, if you're a Walla, Walla member, those workshops are completely free. If you're an artist, uh, the early bird rate, I think is $10 for a workshop. It's 20 bucks. If you don't want to join, you can still attend the workshop, get the, get the uh, information that you're looking for at a very low rate. Um, you also, uh, you can take a look at all of our videos that are on the website as well. And, you know, you can sort of explore and see what's going on there. But I'll leave that up on the screen for just a little bit. John, you're so comprehensive that you preempted my question, which was <laughs> ask you how our viewers can learn more about your services. Are there any upcoming events or items that you'd specifically like to highlight? Yes, and I need to ask you, I don't know what the broadcast date for this will be, so I don't want to tell folks to go go see something that's already happened in the past. Well, just tell us what you have upcoming. Okay, so we'll go from there. right now, we're right in the middle of our, our most popular workshop series. It's called the Creative Entrepreneur Series. It is a six-week course that happens every Tuesday, but it compiles all of the most popular workshops that we offer. So it's copyright and trademark protection, right? It's tax strategies for artists, very popular. When I'm speaking to you right now, it's the 20th of March, tax season is coming up, very popular workshop. Um, it's, we talk about negotiation strategies, we talk about grants and leasing for artists who are looking at space, especially studio artists, dance companies, people like that. We talk about, um, oh my gosh, what is the other one? We talk about, um, oh, establishing a 501c3 or what is the best business model for your art. And all those come together. It's, it's a one tidy package. We offer them during the course of the year, but this is the kind of way to get it all kind of squeezed in in a six week period. What great awesome. services you're offering. Cool. Perfect. Uh, we want to remind our viewers that the links will be in the description below. So go ahead and check that out. John, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been such a pleasure and thank you for the amazing work that you and WALA are doing in our communities. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. Everyone have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. To those watching, please follow Team Racine on social media. And click around our YouTube channel, check out our other interviews, vlogs, forums, and more. And while you're there, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But most of all, viewers, thank you for watching.